Yo, what's up? It's Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And you all know that Adam and I have been just all up in the fabric. And we've done some videos on Lake House. We've been talking about Python and notebooks. But now it's time to show the data warehouse a little love. I'm gonna show you how to get started, create your first data warehouse, and get a little data loaded into that data warehouse. So, you know how we like to do? Enough of all this talking, let's do what? Let's head over to my laptop. We're on the app.fabric.microsoft.com. If you click on this little icon and choose Microsoft Fabric, it'll bring you to the home page and you get to choose the experience. So we've been clicking here a lot and here a lot, even here a little bit, but now we're gonna go to the data warehouse and I'm in this insane, amazing workspace. What I'm gonna do is create a new workspace and we're gonna call it the insane, amazing data warehouse. Let's see if that's available. All right, beautiful. And then what we're going to do is go to advance and we're going to put this on our premium capacity so that we can use some fabric items. So there we go. We're in our insane, amazing data warehouse workspace and I'm going to choose new and watch this. I'm just going to click data warehouse and call it adventure works just so we can have something to work with. Click create and boom, <laughs> your data warehouse is created. So now that it's created, we wanna get some data in it. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna create a schema because I'm gonna drop some data into the staging schema. And so look at this, new query, there's these templates out there for me. So I'm gonna create a schema called staging. Just a regular old T-SQL. I'm gonna run this, All right, there it goes. Choose refresh and look at there. There's my staging schema. If I expand it out, there's no tables or anything. So inside of this data warehouse, you have full access to data manipulation language and data definition language. So you can create objects, you can insert data. There are some T-SQL limitations, but you can do a lot of things that you normally do in a regular SQL Server database. So it's pretty nice. So now I have my schema created. Now I want to get some data into this. Let me show you. I can choose get data. I have two options here. There are some other options that I'm going to talk about later from like a programmable way to get data in here. But right now we're going to focus on the graphical user interfaces. So we got two options, data flows gen two and a new data pipeline. You got to stay tuned for a video where I'm going to do on data flows gen two. Right now we're going to focus on the new data pipeline. So I'm going to do a new pipeline. We're going to call this get staging data. Click create. Watch is going to walk us through a neat, nice little wizard. So we're going to get our data from a Azure SQL database. So I type that in. There we go. Click next. And now I can select an existing connection or I can create a new one. So I can provide all the details. This is pretty simple. So I'm going to choose existing connection, choose my AdventureWorks database, click next. And then I can choose existing tables or I can write a query. I'm going to use some tables here. Customer, we want sales territory and let's choose employee. And so we want those three tables. I'm going to click next. It's going to say, choose my destination. Well, I want it to go in this data warehouse. That's where I want it to go. And then I'm going to click next. And now I have some options here. So I'm going to choose load this to a new table. I'm going to change the schema on all of these. So let's get that on my clipboard. So I don't have to type that over and over again. And then I'm going to get rid of them. And then I'm going to put the stage in schema here, get rid of them there. And the same thing here, exact same thing here. Now, something that you need to be aware of is that all data types aren't supported, like this var binary. So I need to get rid of that. I don't want to bring that into the data warehouse. Same thing with employee. Employee has a var binary column here also. And so I'm going to get rid of that one also. And you can set up new mappings. You can do different things. There's a lot of flexibility here. You should go take a look at the documentation, look at the limitations on the data types that are actually supported. So now we have everything set up. Let's take a quick look. Staging customer, staging employee, staging sales territory. Okay, let's click next. Some settings here. We're going to allow staging and we're not going to do anything with the copy command settings just quite yet. Click next and it says, hey, do you want to start immediately? Of course I do. I'm going to click save and run. I got to click OK here and it's going to save it out and it's going to start running it. And now you can see it's succeeded. So let's head back over to my data warehouse. Let's go take a look here and go under that schema. Boom. You can see my tables. It'll give us a quick preview. If I want to, I can write queries against this. I can do some visual queries. I can create reports, I can add measures, I can do so much to this. And we'll come back and we'll do videos to kind of dive deep into those. But check this out. I want to show you something. I'm going to run a, a simple query. So I'm going to go here. I'm just going to create a new blank SQL query, paste it in, and let's get some counts. 
18,296 and 11. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a store procedure. I can start from this template or I'm not that bad at writing T-SQL. So I'm gonna create a store procedure that clears out my staging table so that every time I run my pipeline, it will clear it out and add that new staging data. There will be no new data added to these, but I just wanna show you how this works. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. It creates this store procedure for me. Then I'm gonna go back over to my pipeline. Watch this. I'm gonna go to activities. I'm gonna look for store procedure. I'm gonna drop it over here. You can choose external or within the workspace. Here's my AdventureWorks data warehouse. And then if I click this, it's gonna give me a list of all the store procedures in that data warehouse. Go ahead and click it. If there were any parameters, it will populate them up. And so what I'm gonna do is say run this first. And then if this succeeds, add my new data. So let's go ahead and run this and let's see what happens. We're gonna choose save and run. While this is running, we're gonna wait for this one to succeed. Right? So the store procedure succeeded. So I'm gonna head back over to my data warehouse. And remember that query I had, this particular query right here, I think it was query two, right? I'm gonna do a count. And so right now, if I run this, all the tables are empty. If I head back over to my pipeline, now that everything succeeded, if I head back over to my data warehouse and go to SQL query two and run this, you can see that everything's back populated how it was. It's pretty nice, this fabric, because I have all the things I need. I can write store procedures, I can call store procedures, I can use pipelines to quickly grab data from you know multiple tables from my source and land it into my data warehouse. All right, what do you think? Have you been tinkering with this data warehouse? This is just the beginning, we're gonna do some great things with this data warehouse as we progress through our learnings with Fabric. So if you have any questions, comments, you know what to do, post it in the comments below. If you wanna learn more about Fabric, take a look at that playlist that's flying over my list. <laughs> my list, that's flying over my head. <laughs> as always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next video.